Hello everyone and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. My name is Mariah Ferranti and today we have Volker Coco presenting and Naman Meisterwala and Bryce Thielen moderating. So a little about us. Uh, Volker is our KDE technical support specialist based out of Lake Oswego, Oregon. I'm Mariah, based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, Bryce is uh, out of Lake Oswego, Oregon as well, a technical support specialist. And Naman is in Westchester, Cincinnati, one of our expert elite. So uh, upcoming Autodesk webinars. We have Introduction to Drafting with Precision in AutoCAD 2018 on May 8th, uh, Layer Management and Properties and Modification in AutoCAD 2018, June 15th, uh, Annotation in Your Drawings on July 13th, Scale Scaling and Hatching in AutoCAD 2018 on August 17th. Um, so you can watch past Autodesk webinars on the Build Your AutoCAD IQ YouTube playlist. And you can also download these data sets and follow along on the box drawing account. Uh, that link is available in the slide set and it should also be available in the reminder email that you should have received. So you can sign up for the Autodesk um, IQ webinars on the landing page. We also have the community forums, which has a ton of information and helpful expert elites to answer questions. We also have the AutoCAD Customer Council, where you can join and beta test the new features in AutoCAD. So we've got a couple email links there that you can check out to give in feedback, and anybody can join. So for Autodesk Knowledge Network is a great place to get started um, anytime you have a problem or a question. There's a lot of great information there. You can find the links for customer service, activation and licensing, account management, and a lot of helpful how-tos and troubleshooting tips there. So I'm going to hand this off to Volker so he can get started with some polls. All right. Thank you, Mariah, and welcome, everybody. I am, as Mariah said, going to go ahead and start us off with some polls just to um, find out where everybody is at with AutoCAD uh, with these webinars that we're having. This does help us out, so any information um, filling this out, uh, it's really appreciated. And I, I know they get kind of boring at times. Especially if you've been here before, you're going to see a lot of the same polls, but truly it does help us. So it's like um, as far as how many people have attended before, um, we have a total of yeah, getting around 80, 90 percent who have not, sorry, lost my train of thought there. I'm going to close the poll here. And let's go ahead and share that. And as you can see, we've got some good numbers here as far as how many have attended or have not been here. Welcome to those of you who have not attended. We hope this will be worthwhile for you and that you'll join us in future sessions. For those who have been here before, really do appreciate the fact that uh, you're here again, and it's always good to have you here as well. So um, welcome back, and welcome to everybody who is new. Let's go ahead, and I've, I have two more. We're going to get these out of the way real quick, Light. So what is the current version of AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT that you're using right now? Uh, some of you have probably already started working with 2018. Uh, a lot of you, it appears, are on 2017 or 16. Not as many on 16, and uh, some earlier. And I am really happy to see that everybody knows 
which version of AutoCAD they're working with. It's always a good thing. If you don't, it could also mean that um, maybe you're not working with AutoCAD. Maybe you're working with uh, Revit, and you just want to check out to see what's going on with AutoCAD in this release. Go ahead and close that, and let's go ahead and just kind of show you what the numbers were. And as you can see, most of you are on 2017, a little over half, uh, followed by 2016 and then 2018. So 12% uh, on the earlier version. And I know there are a lot of reasons for that, so we won't get into that. And then one more poll here. Um, This is just to see which AutoCAD or L AutoCAD LT uh, you're using. See if anybody here is on the Mac platform. We do have uh, AutoCAD for the Mac and LT for the Mac 2017 out there. Looks like about 30% or so are on LT for Windows, close to 70% on AutoCAD for Windows with 1% each on the Mac versions. Awesome stuff. Thank you for um, taking the time to uh, do a couple of mouse clicks and uh, le letting us know what versions of AutoCAD we're on. OK, enough for polls right now. Again, welcome back. Welcome to everybody who's new. I'm happy to be back. It's uh, been quite a while for me since I've presented here. And um, I am going to run my PowerPoint real quick here. And oops, should have started off where we left off. My fingers are a little twitchy from all the caffeine, so pardon me. Hey, today's agenda. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the um, uh, environment, the new and enhanced features of AutoCAD 2018 and AutoCAD LT 2018. Many of the changes this time around um, are the same for both AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. Uh, we'll take a look at, uh, along with those features, we're going to take a look at the uh, technology and performance updates. Uh, there's been quite a bit of improvement uh, to performance uh, because of the change in technology. And that uh, change includes graphics as well as file format changes. We are on a new file format. Uh, it's been five years. And um, uh, typically in the past, we've seen it every three years. This time, it's five years. and one of the major reasons for this file format change is due to uh, um, enhancing performance. We'll also take a look behind the scenes. Um, I have on here commands and system variables. Um, these are all things uh, you know you should be aware of, especially some of the system variables. And it's not going to be a long geeky talk about that, but we'll talk about um, updates how they become available for AutoCAD nowadays through the Desktop Application Manager, uh, as well as some other fun, geeky stuff. And finally, there are some resources I do want to point out. We point out resources every time we have one of these demonstrations. Uh, but at this time, I think it's uh, more than important than ever to kind of get the word out and show you what is available for you to uh, download, install as a supplement to AutoCAD, uh, an enhancement to AutoCAD, also where you can find more information about the application. So having said that, let me go ahead and minimize my PowerPoint. And here we have AutoCAD 2018. You'll notice there isn't that much that'll tell you that it's different from AutoCAD 2017. Quite a few of you were on AutoCAD 2017, 
And if you've been updating it as those updates become available, you may even see that many of the features uh, have that were incorporated with update 1.1 for AutoCAD 2017 are what is being uh, looked at as a new feature in 2018. That doesn't mean that there are old features, okay? There have been enhancements to a lot of those. There are also some really nice uh, new features in here that are going to make you a little more productive, uh, reduce a lot of headaches, especially with external references, and um, uh, just give you an overall better experience. Now, I'm going to start off with so, some of the subtle interface changes, enhancements. Um, and, and these may seem minimal, but as a having been a drafter at one point, I know that just being able to do some of the stuff that I'm going to show you is um, a nice enhancement. So the first thing, it's just the take a look at any of our select file dialogues. Um, all of these, uh, whether you're using open, save as, uh, uh, save command, whatever, um, we've one of the major requests ha has been that if I create a specific sort order, let's say I want to sort this by date modified, and this is how I would prefer to see it every time I work with my um, AutoCAD. I want perhaps the latest modified drawing file to appear at the top. Okay, well nowadays when you make changes such as this in the select dialogs, even if you cancel out at this stage, I repeated the command, that particular sort order remains in effect. So again, a subtle feature, uh, but it's one that I think many will appreciate. Another enhancement has been to the drafting dialogue, and like a lot of um, dialogues nowadays, that um, that have been modified, again, this is a subtle thing, but here we can now resize this dialog. Okay, so instead of having to scroll up here to see the extra tabs, we're able to resize that. For our color dialog, there's been a, another subtle but nice enhancement. So in the past, if we were to select a color for our layers, and this is through any of the color dialog controls, where, regardless of where you find them, if you were to choose more colors, uh, somebody, let's say, gave you an RGB factor for your color, it was difficult to get that RGB factor correctly. Uh, and in 2017 1.1, we were able to now type in our RGB factor. And so if I were to type in something like 100,200,150, now applies that as I would expect. Changes have also been made to the quick access toolbar, and this is overdue. Uh, we've always been able to get to our commands and add more commands to our quick access toolbar from this drop-down menu. What's always been missing is the layer control. In order to make it available, regardless of what tab you're in on the ribbon, we can now choose to add it from the list. So one of the things is, I mean, uh, we can also add it this way, but a lot of people didn't realize that functionality was there. Instead, 
we've made it easier for uh, end users to quickly add that so it's always available. So again, a bit subtle, but um, but uh, I think it's a pretty nice nice bit of functionality that was missing. With AutoCAD uh, 2016, I believe it was, may have been with 17, I can't recall now, must be getting old. Um, they added a function to monitor system variables. Okay, sorry. <laughs> forgot to open the drawing. So in the past when they did that, when that was initially added, we actually had a notification bubble appear down here. You may have seen that opening up legacy drawings uh, and maybe found the bubble to be kind of annoying. I didn't mind it too much because it went away and it would notify me. Uh, clicking on this nowadays, you'll see that we have an option to enable that balloon notification. So we don't have to worry about the bubble here, but if we do want to see it, we can just select it here. And then uh, if necessary in this case, maybe I'd want to reset the variables to my preferred settings. I won't do that right now. I want to show you this little shortcut here though. If you are notified that the uh, uh, variable has changed, you can just quickly select reset system variables and it resets those to the defaults. So just to make things a little easier there. We've always had options to change the look of the interface, our drawing editor, whether we're in paper space, a layout tab here, or whether we're in model space, in the block editor, in the plot dialog, etc we could have line work, um, not line work, but how the ele interface elements appear on the screen. For example, the crosshair here is white on a white background, that crosshair is black. But we also have what is called a rubber band line. So if I were to take this particular um, uh, M text, take it by a grip here to move it somewhere. We have that orange dashed line. Well, that could be very difficult to see. What if it were yellow, right? Which it never has been, but it is a little more difficult to see. So maybe I want something a little uh, brighter, something that stands out a little bit more. So what I did, I right clicked over the command line to get to my options dialog. And under the display tab, under colors, for each environment that we have in AutoCAD, block editor, uh, plot preview, 2D, 3D, um, or layout, we can now change the rubber band line. So in this case, I could change it to maybe something darker. I'll apply a close, apply OK. Now if I do this, did I not change that? Awkward moment, people. Uh, for those of you who know me, you were probably waiting for that moment. Rubber band. <laughs> I just, just did this earlier. I know it works. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, that's very awkward. I changed this just right before I reset my application. Yeah, let's try something here because I am just annoyed now. I must have screwed up something when I reset. Trust me, it works. Trust me on that. I know it does. I've done this too many times. <laughs> um, but I won't dabble with that. Um, yeah, give it a try on your own. Um, yeah, feeling very, very awkward. Okay. All right. So um, 
here's something that's been uh, that annoys people um, in previous releases. I know it annoyed me all the time, and that is if I'm zoomed in on something like this here. And let's say I want to make a selection and uh, I'll go ahead and just drag a crossing window here. As soon as that selection went off the screen in the past, I would lose the selection. Nowadays, you can now see that it continued that selection. I did not lose it and I'm able to manipulate those objects even though they were selected off screen. This is due to the selection oops selection off screen select off screen There we go. Selection off screen system variables. So if you're running Lisp routines, macros, um, and you want to uh, or need to uh, change that back to the legacy value of zero, uh, which would, of course, lose that selection, this is the system variable that does it. Or maybe you're running 2018 and it's not working, change that variable or make sure that variable's set to 1. So a much wanted and needed variable or enhancement. Previous release we introduced the ability to select line work that had gaps in it, so a dotted line work, uh, dashed line work, um, and that worked pretty well, but it did not work with complex line types like a gas line type, uh, nor did it work with um, line work that came in from, say, uh, a DGN file. That's been enhanced as well with this release, so just zooming in here with my not selecting the line, I can go ahead and just pick, and I've selected that line work, even though it was in the gap. I'm going to go ahead and right mouse click here. I'm going to go ahead and add selected to add another gas line, and I'll use a near O snap. And again, not even selecting the line work, I'm able to pick a point right in that gap there and continue the line work. So another nice enhancement, enhancement to a previously enhanced function. Um, I could have used that years ago. By the way, that is um, due to a system variable called LT gap selection. So again, if it's not working, LT gap selection and setting it to zero turns off that entire effect. All right. Well, oh, um, like I said, a lot of these are subtle. I, I actually, I think the um, the line work one here is pretty. Um, pretty um, powerful uh, as opposed to just being subtle as well as the off-screen selection. But in 2017, we introduced something even nicer, something that was much requested, and that was to, um, uh, to be able to import geometry from a PDF as opposed to just having it as an underlay. And if you've been working with 2017, you'll know this is um, really nice functionality. Uh, one of the drawbacks, though, with importing a PDF file uh, was that shape-compiled text 
So anything created with like uh, Romanesque font, simplex, TXT, whatever, uh, that text was uh, treated as geometry once the PDF was inserted. And that's not because of a lack of functionality in AutoCAD, it's because of the fact that the PDF format does not recognize shape compiled fonts, whereas any true type fonts uh, would be imported as uh, text, which could be modified. So that has also changed in this release. I'm going to go to the insert tab of the ribbon. I'm going to select PDF import. And here we have a preview of our PDF. And when going into this dialog here for the import PDF, it lists all the sheets. For this example, I'll go ahead and select the second one. And just as a quick review here, selecting options, let's say there are scanned images in that PDF, those cannot be converted to geometry. So they are attached as an underlay. And here you can specify the location. If you don't specify location, it just saves it in uh, the working folder of the drawing. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. I'll go ahead and, um, yeah. Click OK. Go ahead and do a 0, 0. And it is now importing that PDF. So you'll notice here, true type text, it's treated as text. But here, all of this, and I'll zoom in pretty close, you'll see it's just treated as individual lines, polyline art um, segments. So not much you can do with this. What they've added is a tool to recognize shape uh, compiled text. I'm going to use this to convert this to readable or editable text. Uh, recognition settings, we'll go into that as we're in the command itself, although we can apply our settings prior to the command. So what it does here, we're going to go ahead and select this. And prior to my selecting the objects, I'm going to go ahead and select settings. Now what this does in this dialog, AutoCAD, as we convert the text, will check to see what fonts to compare the shapes of the text to. Okay, so um, basically uh, we can choose from several different fonts that we have installed with AutoCAD that are shape compiled and um, yeah, it will compare and choose the best option or choose the option that you would like to choose. So if I want Roman S, I only want it to compare uh, Roman S and Simplex and TXT to what I have here, I would select those. Or I could say, hey, use the best matching font. I can always tell to use the current layer or the same layer as the geometry it's on right now. Um, uh, so you have some choices there. Here we can see what text would look like if we were to select that font only as the text we want converted to. We could even type in some different verbiage down here. I tend to choose best matching font, but maybe I'm not sure which one of these would look right. So Maybe I'll, I need to add a font. So I could add maybe bold. Let's go ahead and do that. It adds it there. And um, I could choose to have it also compare against that font as well. 
And I can also remove fonts from this list, obviously. Like I said, I'm going to use best matching font. I'm going to click OK. And I'll go ahead and select my text. And once I hit enter, it processes that, as we can see on the status bar, the progress bar there. Once we've done that, we get a message here, and it tells us how many groups of selected geometry were converted to text. And it tells me 19 text objects created, and one font was used simplex. I'm going to click OK. So it didn't convert all of it at this time. You may have to go back and, and uh, do some more conversion uh, for some of the text. And it's unfortunate in this case that I selected the wrong fonts in there. It's not, a, not that big of a deal uh, in the long run because we can't convert them. But I was hoping to make this a little cleaner. Obviously, I'm not going to right now because we're moving on to combined text. So this is the text to mText command. Typically, we would only find this under Express Tools. So this is a nice thing for all you AutoCAD LT users because you haven't had this particular function because you don't have Express Tools. Now you do have text to mText, and it will be... Um, found under the insert menu. I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'll go ahead and select my text. And obviously, it's not going to work on all of this because I didn't uh, convert the rest of the text. But as you can see, it is um, a um, now one mText object. Now, later on, I'm going to go ahead and undo this as we do a Q&A, and I'll uh, get all the settings uh, the way I should have had them to begin with, and I'll walk through that again. Because uh, the nice thing is that if this is set up correctly, and it doesn't take a lot, it just takes not being a goofball, like I can be at times, and um, uh, letting AutoCAD do the job correctly, uh, because it will not only convert this to a uh, paragraph text, it will also create it a, as a numbered list. So we'll revisit that one a little later since we're done with uh, the rest of uh, the rest of this feature presentation. Okay, so here's I think the biggie for a lot of you working with external references. I mean, uh, one of the things that we've always had problems with is if somebody sends us um, an X-referenced package, we may have hard-coded paths in there. Maybe some of those uh, files are unloaded and we need to load them in order to modify them. Um, we uh, may need to repath those files. And that is fairly easy to do now uh, in, in AutoCAD uh, using the Reference Manager. First of all, let's begin with this particular file right here, a new drawing. So one of the biggies has been that if we were to use a relative path, AutoCAD would not allow us to do this unless we had already saved the drawing file. They've introduced a new system variable, and it's called ref path whoops, type. It has a value of 0, which sets a default for no path, 1 for relative path, which it's set to right now, and 2 for a full path. And what that means is I can go ahead and attach a reference file to this drawing, which I'll go ahead and do. Go to Attach here. We'll go ahead and select the DWG from our folder. And we'll just go ahead and use this one for grins. And um, 
screen. Note the relative path here. And we'll click OK. Selecting this, you'll see that we have, and this is kind of hard to see, I understand that with the resolution and then through your web browser or, or the GoToWebinar interface, but there is actually a little asterisk right uh, in front of the, uh, it's prefixing the drawing path. That indicates that it is a relative path at this time until the drawing has been saved. Once I've saved this, it'll, it'll show up as a relative path itself. Right now it's just showing, hey, this is the path it's at right now, but look, uh, I have this asterisk here, so until you save this, uh, that could change. And if we take a look down here in the details pane, you'll see that it says pending relative path, yes. Okay, so that means it's saying, again, once you save this, that relative path will display um, uh, like, like this right here. And we'll see more of that as I talk more about reference files here. You'll see that we have many files. Again, maybe a little hard to see. And by the way, we do have uh, this data set and the script available for you as a download later on. So you can walk through all of this yourself with uh, uh, some nice built-in instructions. But before we do that, let's demonstrate it as well. You'll see we have a lot of files here that were not, a found, not found. Uh, possibly they're in a, uh, well, first of all, they're hard-coded paths. Uh, second of all, the uh, paths are going to be different on my machine than they were on Heidi's when she uh, put this set together. So what I'm going to do right now is um, allow AutoCAD to quickly update this stuff for me. And uh, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and save, or uh, excuse me, select the map information here, and you'll see we have several options. As I right mouse click, so all these options are on the right mouse click, the context sensitive menu. Uh, one of the things I want to point out, it's an absolute path right now. If I wanted to, I could change path type by making it relative or completely removing the path. I also have the option to select a new path or find and replace a path. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and use select new path. And having done that, I'm going to go ahead and move to a folder that has that particular reference file in it as well as others. So I'll select the one, make sure I grab the right one, map information. And I'll click open and I'll get a message here saying, hey, you've got other reference files in there. Do you want to apply that same settings? And I'm going to say, why, yes. And so now it has updated that map information as well as uh, circulation. I think map buildings was one of them. And note that they are all showing as relative now because of our uh, ref um, um, ref type pa uh, ref path type system variable. It has automatically made those relative. There are still some here that are shown as not found, and they were not in that particular folder. And so we can also choose to uh, point AutoCAD in the right direction for those particular files. So I'm going to go ahead and using my control key, I'm going to go ahead and select this file. I'll go ahead and select this one, that one, and those are the only ones listed as not found. So now I'll right mouse click again 
And this time, I'm going to go ahead and select the option to uh, find and replace. This is a nice feature as well. And it shows me a dialog for a find and replace save path and replace with path. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to the location of those files. It doesn't show anything in here. It's just a way to select folders. I'm going to click open. And as far as where I want to save them to, well, they're going to be relatives. So I'm not going to point to a new path. I could, but I don't need to because I have that relative path as a default. I'm just, oops, ah, I used the wrong. I misspoke on that one. <laughs> so, let's go cancel, cancel, because I did the whole thing wrong, actually. So change path type, find and replace. There we go. Replace with. That's what I wanted to do. Open. And replace all. And it tells me that three reference so successfully updated one reference file failed. And the one that failed, okay, not found. Oh, I must have already I must have selected one too many. Because there was only three that were not found earlier. So I, uh, I'm out of practice. What can I say? Another awkward moment. So that's two. Or is it three? I, I lose count at times. All right. So um, another way to change the path type um, is to manually change the path. Um, but um, one is... If we select, say, this particular file here, if I wanted to change its path uh, right here, for example, right now it is not, um, it is absolute, which I pointed out earlier that this would be grayed out. So what I can do here is make that path relative and it updates here. Another nice feature about this is that if I now save the host file to a new location, say using save as, and let's say that I probably already have this on my desktop. Yes, I do want to replace it. Um, actually, before I do that, let me scooch this over. Note the um, reference manager here. I'll click save. I'll click yes. And it prompts me, do I want to update the references with relative paths? Well, yes, I do. And it automatically updates those in our dialog here. So there's no need to reopen uh, reference manager, reload stuff. Uh, none of that needs to be done. And the same goes to uh, having renamed or having to rename a file. So, for example, I have this map Teleferico here. And if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and rename the drawing file itself right here. Let's just get rid of map. And it left. Teleferico. There we go. So it's renamed now, and I did not need to do anything with that um, particular file um, in this particular reference manager. Using the rename command, going to blocks, we may want to rename the reference file here. And of course, it only does it within the drawing. It's not going to rename that physical file. Let's say we take map circulation. And I just want to call it circulation. 
makes it more readable for me maybe. I'll go ahead and click rename to, click OK. And it's now updated that file in here as well. So there's some pretty groovy stuff going on when it comes to the reference manager. Um, I think with the uh, one thing about orphan files, it's always been kind of difficult to see, well, who does that um, belong to? And um, take a look here in tree view. It now gives us uh, the tree view of the orphan files as well. Switching back to our details view, uh, we do have some files here that are unloaded. Okay, maybe map base. And let's see. And save this. Oops. And I lost my train of thought on that one. Anyway, good enhancements there. I hope everybody um, does appreciate some of the uh, reference tools that are in there. Again, um, it's going to take some getting used to for a lot of this stuff. And uh, you'll have that data set available just to uh, kind of a nice quick little tutorial to work with. All right, let's move on to some of the um, other enhancements that have been added. One of them is if you're using 360, A360 for uh, sharing through uh, design view. Okay, under the public option, we have this design views here. This can also be found under the A360 tab. And you can quickly share your design on the web. It will upload. And we had options to either notify me after it's done updating or sh to show it in a browser as we're working. Um, let's hope that can't recall honestly whether or not I needed the browser open right away, but the notification would have appeared regardless. Oh, there it is. Okay. And um, We'll let this here kind of move on. It's going to process this model online. And once available, we're notified or we will see it here. And then we can share links to that design to our consultants, our contractors, and make uh, the project work available for all users. If you haven't used A360, it is pretty cool. It does publish all of the layouts that we have in this drawing. So we'll go back to the browser once it's done uploading. OK, again, the file format has changed. And um, we can work with AutoCAD 2018 side by side with previous versions. And maybe that's one, what you want to do until you're comfortable that everything works for you. Uh, if that's the case, don't forget, um, instead of just using File Save As to save it to the format that AutoCAD 2017 uses, you can always apply this as a default save for the 2013 drawing format. Uh, that uh, will save you a lot of time and uh, probably a lot of headaches if you're going back and forth between uh, other end users using an older version of AutoCAD. The file format change does improve performance as far as saving. Um, and, and if you have a lot of text or attributes, uh, multi-lines, the um, performance has increased um, I don't dramatically, I don't know if that's a good word, but it's improved, increased significantly. And another um, a performance benefit, in fact, is with 3D. If 
you're doing a lot of 3D models, you'll know that if you were to change a visual style from, say, um, uh, 2D wireframe to a realistic, you know, it would slow down the drawing quite a bit. And even in a wireframe at times, it was a little slower than we would want. So panning, using 3D Orbit. If I go ahead and turn on my Visualize panel here, and we go there and we change that to a 2D, from 2D to say realistic. Come on. There we go. See, 3D Orbit is pretty fast now with this uh, new graphics uh, performance. So that should make a lot of you 3D users uh, happy, especially when you, if you're working with the verticals like mechanical, MEP, AutoCAD architecture, you're going to see quite a bit of improvement there. Uh, some other changes are the uh, 2D display excuse me, high resolution 4K monitor support. So they've had to pretty much redesign uh, all the dialogues in AutoCAD in order to allow things to be readable uh, or viewable for that matter in on a, on a 4K monitor, high resolution monitor. Um, and I will say there are still a couple of small, a uh, couple of lesser used dialogues out there. Uh, that still need to be enhanced, but uh, things like the CUI editor, uh, file open, file save, um, uh, all these dialogues on our palettes now appear as expected in a um, high-resolution environment. There are a few more subtle items. Um, one of those is, uh, and actually I'll go to my PowerPoint for this, and then we'll go ahead and take some Q&A in the few minutes we have left. And let's go ahead and slideshow current. So um, uh, the resources that I want to talk about are that uh, we have the AutoCAD trial downloads available and I believe today was a uh, release day for a lot of the vertical applications, MEP, uh, AutoCAD architecture, um, the other ones, uh, other verticals that may not have been released will be within this month. Um, one of the resources I did want to show you was don't forget about this knowledge network. For example, um, if you're looking for the language packs, those are located here, um, specifically for AutoCAD 2018 here. Object enablers for plant and civil 3D. You can get any of those um, drawings from um, customers, uh, you're going to want to install those enablers. Uh, some of the utilities in the past, scaleless cleanup, RegApp ID cleanup. Uh, the Visual Basic model, those are all available here. So uh, very similar for the AutoCAD LT. Oops, that one failed. And that, probably a network time out there that happens. Um, system requirements, uh, the downloads I just uh, uh, showed you. But uh, what I truly wanted to point out here were two things. One, there is a new version of design review available. The link is here, or you can go to the Autodesk website and uh, put in design review for the um, uh, search parameters. And uh, it is compatible with AutoCAD 2018. Um, it hasn't changed much in the application, but it now um, uh, is up to date with our products and the operating systems available out there. DWG TrueView is also available for AutoCAD 2018. Um, of course, there's the A360 Online Viewer. Uh, all of these are on the same web page. And then there's a new AutoCAD mobile app uh, to work with your drawings. You can download from that page as well. Uh, it's 
uh, part of your subscription uh, as far as that goes. One thing I would like to point out for our LT users is there is a, a system variable now that was not available in the past. If you're working with multiple layouts, um, we've always had a system variable called layout regen CTL, which allows you to change the um, how AutoCAD caches the information in a layout. So if it's very sluggish, uh, maybe uh, it is trying to regenerate the layout every time when you don't need it to. So you can change the settings. There's um, 0, 1, 2, and 3, I believe it is. Uh, the help file, if you were to hit F1 right now, would tell you what those ver uh, bit codes are and what uh, each one of them does. Another variable available, it's been available as a hidden variable for a while, is regen 3. And this, in, uh, this will update 3D graphics for you on the AutoCAD or AutoCAD verticals. Uh, to uh, If things aren't displaying properly after you've done some zooming and panning, regen 3 specifically for 3D objects. That said, there are more subtle features, enhancements available uh, in the application. But right now, I guess what I'd like to do is um, uh, take the last two or three minutes to answer any questions I may have missed. Um, and also, I told you I was going to do that part again with the text. Um, I will throw a screencast together, show you how cool that works, and we will have a link to that in the um, follow-up email, which has the links to all our data sets. And so, that said, um, are there any questions, Mariah, that uh, weren't answered or thoughts, comments? There was one question that I saw that you would probably be able to answer well. Um, so with custom line types, is there a way to have the text curve or bend with the line on, or curves uh, or cor corners? Do you know? Yeah, it's a, yep. It, it, it's a little off topic, but yes, there is. Uh, it's a change uh, that you need to make in the line type def definition file. Um, uh, so just br uh, quickly do this. You go to customization and we go down to line types uh, where is it it actually shows you exactly what you need to do which is to change the line type to have a um, there we go um, an R in it for rotation uh, complex custom line type so um, in the line type itself, you'll have something like um, uh, what is it? R for relative rotation, absolute rotation, and upright rotation. Um, older line types are all going to have just an absolute rotation. Uh, so you would want to maybe change that value in here to R, which allows you to have the, let's say you're drawing a circle with a custom line type, it would rotate the text with the circle itself, as opposed to being upside down at the bottom of the circle, or vice versa. I hope that makes sense. But it's all in about shapes and custom line types in your AutoCAD help. And that's been around since AutoCAD 2011, so um, good question. Off topic, but good question. <laughs> oh, awesome. I did not know that. Um, we have another question about is there any updates to plotting and printing, uh, specifically to PDF with font substitutions? Uh, the changes that were made in the previous release, uh, 2016, those were the latest changes as far as 
any kind of uh, substitution to fonts. Um, they did introduce, and uh, I don't know if Bryce has his mic on or not. I can't recall if it was 2017 or 16, where um, uh, the system variable uh, for shapes was introduced. But since 2016, I know nothing has changed at this time. One of the things is if you're looking, here's something I, I can't stress enough. If you have feature requests like that, things you'd like to see changed, um, comments you have about the application, good or bad, whatever, are my, my good friend Dan <laughs> would love to hear from you. I know he wouldn't. He's going to kill me afterwards. But send feedback to the product team, okay? Fill this out. Select your product and let them know what's on your mind, what you'd like to see changed, what uh, you'd like to see added, uh, improved, removed, uh, functionality, enhancements, you name it. Just let them know. So I think we're uh, past time. I wish I could, uh, I wish I would have sped it up a little for you guys. Um, I, I'm hoping you're going to walk away with something good. Um, uh, before I cut this off, you will get the links to the data set. I'll also have the preview guide in there, as well as the script uh, that's been put together for this demo, as well as the data files. So download those and uh, check all the tools out, get comfortable with them, all the functions, and um, be a happy camper with your AutoCAD. Uh, and I hate to be abrupt, but I am going to say goodbye and thank you all for being here. I know your time is valuable. Uh, we all really appreciate it. Thank you very much and have a great day.